Now, when you get a beer at like a bar, like a shaker pint, yeah. and it's just coming off the sides in random spots, that's usually grease or like dirt or something. Oh. Um, and that happens a lot like restaurants. If they're washing their beer glasses in with like the wings dishes and stuff. I've already learned, I've already learned, <laughs> I've, I've already learned yeah. so much disgusting stuff that yeah. I never there's, thought I would. There's a difference between a clean glass and a beer clean glass. Beer clean you, is yeah. a specific thing. If, yeah. if, I, I have to, gla- if I'm being the clean. jerk expert about stuff. That's no, it. please. Hey everyone, welcome to A-Grade, the podcast where a college professor and a middle school teacher taste, review, and grade America's best coffee roasters, craft breweries, and more. We have new episodes every Monday morning at 7 a.m., and you can check out our bonus content over on patreon.com slash A-Grade podcast for behind-the-scenes pictures, videos, and a full report card of every place we've ever visited. So if you want to become an A-Grader yourself, get that behind-the-scenes golden content. Again, you can go on over to patreon.com slash A-Grade podcast. And there should be a link in the episode description wherever you're listening to this as well. My name, of course, as always, is Joe. And I am joined also, as always, of course, by... Hi, everybody. I'm Jackie. And so today we have a bit of a fun tweak change of plans because we have a very special guest in town, my brother. And his name is, of course, John. And he's worked for several breweries from North Carolina to Oregon. And he does, I think, very well know the brewing process, uh, brewery process rather, inside and out from brewing to fermentation to packaging to distributing. And he loves all varieties of beer, but always has a taste for the next A-grade brew like we always say we're looking for. So welcome this week, Johnny, to a very special, probably our first uh, guest interview that we've done that's not somebody who owns a coffee roaster or a brewery, but just kind of an industry. I'm going to call you an industry insider. Is that okay? I was actually thinking industry expert because you feel like way more of an expert than me, and I'm super excited for that. <laughs> uh, I don't. I'm scared of the word expert, but I'm glad to be here. It's exciting. You look like an expert. You have you. a hat that literally says, "What does it say?" Uh, it's a malt company, Main Stem Malt. Okay, who's yeah. walking around with that hat on? Who doesn't have the the knowledge to uh, to back that? Probably a lot of idiots. <laughs> it's a very small company. I don't think there's many of these hats. <laughs> so. Anyway, so like I was saying, we wanted to do something a little bit different because Johnny's in town. And like we said, he is a, a brewery guy. And yeah, we have some beers from our travels. We took him to a few breweries that we've actually done reviews of before. So we said, hey, why don't we do a bit of a tasting and get his opinions on some of these beers? He can walk us through a little bit of his process of how he, I don't know, I guess kind of approaches different styles of beer. And then inevitably we can argue about why maybe we have differences of opinion on them, because that's what this is really all about. Right, of course. And also just an overview. We have about three beers, correct, that we're going to sample? Well, we have about 30 beers, but we're going to sample about three beers. We're going to sample three beers. (laughs) And then from there, each one of us will give an overall grade for the beer from A to F. And we'll go from there. Yeah. And so Johnny already showed me this scorecard sheet. What was it called again? Uh, that's there's a bunch of different ones depending on what competition. That was one uh, that the Homebrewers Association uses, uh, BJCP approved, which is the Beer Judge Certification Program. Like if you're a beer judge for yeah. a beer competition, that's the program you go through, and uh, it's. I mean, you guys have your own grade rubric because you're teachers. I get that, but the uh, they usually do it numerically for beer competitions mm. um, in case. But there is a lot of subjective notes, too. So yeah. they tied numerically. Then you look at your written notes and decide the judges will decide a winner if yeah. you're going for medals or something. That's actually what I do with my grading rubric for college mm-hmm. is it's a crazy convoluted system that converts into like out of 20 points. Mm-hmm. But that converts very well to A through F letter grade somehow because it gives you enough distribution for pluses and minuses. So I'm all for complex complicated or, or <laughs> whatever, just in-depth grading systems. I just saw you, that sheet and I thought, I, I'm i not going to figure this out in 20 minutes. <laughs> I'm, too, I'm, I'm, I'm not smart enough. So That can be its own episode. Just That's what I mean. Understanding the sheet. Just evaluating. <laughs> yeah, evaluating the sheet. But the fact that you understand all of that, that's why I say, all right, Johnny knows what's going on here. John, sure. Johnny can tell us some things about how to approach these beers because we. I feel as if we kind of have, generally speaking, very different opinions on beer because of... Uh, meet Jackie and I because of how we just like different styles. Mm-hmm. And that's something in the the beer tasting book, uh, Randy Mosher's book that we both read. He does talk about how some people just have palates for different types of beer or whatever. And 
something that we've kind of come to agree or agree to disagree with over time where it's like, okay, there are beers that I'm just not sort of in tune with that style, but I can appreciate when it's well done. Like that's been a big challenge for us knowing that just because we don't like the style, it doesn't mean that it's not a great beer still. So that's something that comes up at work a lot because we'll do uh, taste panels and I, I'm always, are we grading it by like a judge, a competition judge would strictly comparing it to a style or is it just what we like? And yeah. it depends who you ask, like the salespeople, it's what they like and what they think the customer is going to like for the brewers. It's what we want to drink, it's <laughs> what we like, right. what we think good beer is, you know? Um, and so it, but yeah, we're not they're putting beers head to head. You're just trying to get a feel for a brewery. So it's, it's a subjective thing. Right. So yeah. the number grades work for that. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, it definitely makes sense hearing it from that perspective, too, because, I mean, we're trying to have fun with it as well. So we came up with our own <laughs> wacky yes. grading system for breweries, <laughs> which I know you don't agree with necessarily anyway. So maybe we can talk about that, too. But um, yeah, why don't we crack the first beer? What do we have? Yeah, here? let's crack into our first beer. So the first one we have is from Square Head Brewery in Holbrook, New York, which is yeah. actually an episode that we did. I think it was last week or a couple of weeks ago, depending on when we released this one. This one is called the $3 bill. It's a pistachio Pilsner. It's 5.3 alcohol by volume. Nice. And here we go. All right. So you, you're going to assess her opening can. Let's see. Skills. Let's see what she's got here. Wait for it. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> it's really hard with my manicured nails right now, but. <laughs> so the trick to opening a beer can, though, is you want to push down with the thumb on the part you're popping and it'll pick that up a little bit so i'm gonna have you open the next one so okay. i can watch <laughs> see this is already gold because there, there is a trick to i feel as if i might do that innately but now i don't know would you like to do the pouring honors <laughs> i think you got it yeah well a little for me so a, a couple of questions i have starting out because i feel as if i've talked to you about this before that i i think in general canned beer is not usually as good as beer fresh from the brewery itself is that like just a, a product in, in general of the fact that you're getting the freshest product at the brewery or that it's something with the canning process? Like what what exactly is going on overall? So since you decided to bill me as an expert, I'm going to try to use <laughs> all the terms I can here, uh, but I'll try not to go, go on too long. But No, uh, you um, should be using crazy wacky terms. This so is, what, this there, is what we're not paying you there's for. There's good beer and bad beer in the same way. Like, I guess you could have good music and bad music, but sure. is, is it done correctly or not? Like, there's a difference. Like, right. Between, I can listen to pop music and say, I, I don't like pop music, but it's still... It's catchy. Yeah, it's an right. earworm song. Yeah. So the 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 two play in beer, it's called off flavors. Uh, it's, it's something's off, you know, and the beer mm -hmm. doesn't taste right. And you pick it up pretty much in two spots and they, it breaks down to process or handling. So process is how you brewed it. Uh, what kind of yeast you use, if it got mistreated, if something got screwed up or you just wrote a bad recipe too. Um, you know, you put like, you chose <laughs> sure. hops that smelled like feet and you put them in a Pilsner. It's probably not gonna be great. That has happened to me before. I swear. Yeah. Now that you say that, I'm like, I have had beers that smell like feet. <laughs> Sometimes it's good. It depends on the beer. Yeah, but you just I, brand yeah. it as a footstep pilsner. Yeah. This yeah. one smells like apple juice, in my opinion. Um, I don't mean to jump ahead, but it but smells a little apple. The uh, the right. other area it happens is called handling, and that's when it goes into the can, when it goes mm -hmm. into kegs, when it sits in mm -hmm. uh, a tank, when it sits in a shop on like a shelf somewhere, warm in the sunlight for six months, mm -hmm. like you know aged when it shouldn't be so it, it depends where you get the cans but right. yeah generally out of the keg at the place it was made it had to go from where they filled it the tank into their walk-in cooler yeah. so if they screw that up that's really bad mm -hmm. and yeah. it should be pretty fresh there so yeah you're usually going to get better beer yeah the beer the, if they screw that up the beer is probably not going to be that good regardless yeah what's that <laughs> expression how you do anything or how you do everything how you do anything's how you do everything i always mix it up or how you do everything no, that makes sense how you do anything like yeah you know like a like a, a sloppy chef like you know, <laughs> how great is this kitchen gonna be? <laughs> no that def that definitely makes a lot of sense oh. I, and and i feel like you're saying i've definitely had that experience where i think man this can i had at some other point was way better than this can mm -hmm. now yeah. and it could be the person or the the place that's had it for too long or temperature or any number yeah. of things i guess too yeah and this one this can that we're having specifically right now they did say it was their last four i don't know if that makes a difference well, can i but see the can yes it was it was actually awesome because they found four for us because we really wanted to try it so that might also be part of it yeah so again this is the pistachio yeah. pilsner 
So any thoughts about the can? Yeah. So I, I do a lot of packaging now, and I see no date codes or uh, product codes on the bottom, which is common with small places. But it's hard to know how old the beer is then. So yeah. it's hard to say if there's if it's processed or not, you know. But I, we haven't smelled or tasted it yet, so I don't yeah. Really so let's know. do that. Let's move on to that. No. So I like the can art though. Yeah. Me too. Yeah, it's, it's cool. Very retro looking. There's some cool colors on there. The the most common flavor you get from packaging though is oxidation, that like papery cardboard, mm. and it's just when you fill the can, you're introducing air. Yeah. But the systems are getting better now, the newer ones. So Interesting. It's, it's, wow. Yeah. But you always pick up a little bit. Yeah, I, I don't know if I smell it too, but ever since you said apple juice earlier, Jackie, that's all I can smell that's now. That's what I smell. This I smells smell green to me apple, like yeah. green apple. apple. Okay, yeah. And it is a pistachio pilsner, which is interesting, but... Well, is a pistachio a... What is a pistachio? A fruit? A legume? I think it's a nut. I think it's from a tree, right? I think it's an actual nut. Pistachio. Oh, tree clams, yeah. That's tree what clams. They, that's yeah. what they call pistachio, just oh, tree no. clams. Yeah. Who? Oh, no, there's no clams in it. Who calls cheers. it... Oh, Who cheers. calls it a tree clam? Uh, cheers to tree now. clams. Look, look at a pistachio. It looks like a little tree clam. It does, but I think you just made that up. It's a great name. It is great. I just want to give you credit. Like, share, and subscribe. Okay, great. We got to put right. one of those little C's next to it. <laughs> so generally, though, uh, green apple is uh, acetaldehyde, which is a fermentation. Yikes. Uh, is that bad? I mean, it's not great. It tends to be what gives you really bad hangovers. Oh, that that's kind, good to know. If you get, drink a lot of beer with that like green apple flavor, it can drop out though sometimes if you let the beer sit for a while. But if this is an older can that has it, it mm. probably had like a good amount of it. I can um, definitely. It's not taste... always bad. It's just yeah. I can definitely it taste what I think is pistachio. Me too. It comes yeah. at the end. I I could taste it a little bit when I was finished with it. Yeah, it's really interesting. Yeah, I feel like I like the the finish of it much better. I'm tasting the apple fruitiness at the beginning and the pistachio towards the end. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's it's more bitter uh, at the beginning, right? A little bit. Yeah. It's, it's pretty dark colored for no. a Pilsner, isn't it? It's a little cloudy. No? It's a little cloudy. Pilsners are usually yeah. brighter. Yeah, yeah. So if we're being pedantic about it, you want to go based on aroma, appearance, taste, mouthfeel, and aftertaste, okay. I believe, are like the five mm -hmm. things you go by and then like overall impression. You know, because sometimes things might all sound weird independently, but it just comes together in a good beer. Well, it's, inter it's interesting, too, because the pistachio, I guess, component to it is inherently salty to me as well. Oh, Johnny's got a, a flashlight on his beer. Yeah, I keep this little flashlight at work. And when we package beer, I check it for sediment or chunks. And so I'm just used to carrying a tiny flashlight and checking beer. With it. <laughs> That's amazing. It's I'm, like in the movies when yeah. the guy pulls out a jeweler <laughs> loop and is like knows what to look at at the jewel yeah. thing. That's, I'm doing that thing. I'm going to start enough. doing that at breweries. I'm going to use a little flashlight. What do yeah, you, I mean, it's, wait, so what's the first category you said? Uh, appearance. Appearance. So how's it look? I'm a sucker for appearance. I like when the Pilsners are really bright mm -hmm. and bubbly and look refreshing i say that all the time to you that i am normally tricked by the look of a beer because your eyes and your taste buds sometimes connect in a way so this is not the prettiest pilsner i've seen it's just it's thicker or it it's looks thicker thicker than uh, it's funny that thoughts. you say that uh, can i do little side tangents here yeah, about please. so uh the hazy like beer style is huge now but uh heady topper in vermont they were the first uh the, the alchemist yeah, Hetty Topper is the beer. The Alchemist is the brewery. They made the first hazies, and it said right on the can, drink fresh from the can, don't pour in a glass. And like, there's a whole spiel on it about how, like, oh, you'll lose the aromas pouring in a can. But everyone kind of, everyone I've talked to, we kind of, know, like, you kind of know it was because hazy beer was really bad, considered a bad thing for a long mm. time. Like, like you're saying, it's like, it just, it doesn't look good. It's like, why is this murky? So if you, if you just try it first, you'll be like, oh, I like this. Or as you pour it in a glass and see chunks floating in, you're gonna be like, ew. But that's right. how it's, that's how the beer is made. So interesting. Yeah. It's I, just funny how trends change. Yeah. I sort of, it's funny too with this beer, because when I think now of what I want a Pilsner to look like, I always think back to when we were at Human Robot in Philadelphia. Oh my gosh, and that, yes. If you go on our, on our Instagram and you go back, I think it was a reel that we posted, and it was just this long, thin glass. There was so much carbonation. And you see the, the bubbles doing their thing. Did they have, was there like a logo etched in the bottom of the glass? Because that helps with that too. What do you mean? It was etched in the side, their logo. Yeah, so you'll, breweries will etch cut something in the bottom of the glass uh, it's called it creates what's called a nucleation site oh god so that's what causes the foam it gives a surface for the co2 to break out of because it's not perfectly smooth glass oh really um and it helps release that aroma now when you get a beer at like a bar like a shaker pint yeah and it's just coming off the sides in random spots that's usually grease 
or like dirt or something. Oh. Um, and that happens a lot like restaurants if they're washing their beer glasses in with like the winged dishes. And stuff. I've already Ew. learned. <laughs> I've, I've already learned yeah. so much disgusting stuff that yeah. I never there's, thought I would. There's a difference between a clean glass and a beer clean glass. Beer clean you, is yeah. a specific thing. If, yeah. if, I, I have to, if I'm being the clean. jerk expert about stuff, that's, no, yeah. please. But this sometimes is, this you'll they'll, they'll purposely etch like a design in the bottom so that it will release and you get more of that aroma. That's awesome. Yeah. I also thought Long Island Farm Brewery had really beautiful looking beers, and I think a yeah. lot of it had to do with the glasses there. Oh, yeah. they gave us plastic cups, which I did not love. Oh, when I, I we were remember. there, we had glass in the winter. Really? Mm, okay. Yes. I don't remember. Yeah, yeah, I don't like drinking a beer out of brewery either. out of plastic. I know. I hate even no, when I get. Me fl- neither. I, I understand, especially when you get flights and they do it in plastic cups because they're going through so many. But there's something about getting a row of flights in nice, clean, just original glassware that really ups the experience. Beer should always be in a glass. Oh, I agree 100%. Not, yeah. I hate going to a place and they give you a plastic cup. It feels like it's I'm for going. beer pong. <laughs> I, or, yeah, yeah, I was going to say, it feels like I'm going to a really, you know, dive bar yeah. and getting. getting Twenty dollars and yeah. getting as much Coors Light as I want. Well, That's what but it makes the, good, me think. the bright side is <laughs> yeah. a plastic cup's probably clean because it's single use. Yes, That's true. true. Plastic That's plastic is inherently very sterile, right? Yeah, it's just horribly idea. wasteful, especially right. in a place that calls <laughs> itself a farm. You think they'd be more into? Yeah, you bury the plastic. It's all biodegradable. <laughs> yeah, sure. In <laughs> time. Okay. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Anyways. Bug. Oh. Um. Yeah, I don't get too much pistachio. Like, I definitely would want more pistachio. I, I think. I don't know if it's the pistachio I'm picking up or like a like a phenolic-y thing, um, but it's it's interesting. It seems you there's know. definitely pistachio vibes. There's that kind of like saltiness to it almost. And they're not using raw pistachios. Are they using like roasted pistachios? I assume they're roasted. Or... I assume um, they're roasted. I'm not sure though because he did say that they run them over with the truck. That's kind of cool. That's how they grind them up enough mm-hmm. to get them in the recipe yeah what do you whatever. give it for a grade uh for a grade i'm gonna give this one a i'm gonna give it a b minus because i appreciate what they're doing but i think i would like it a lot it, like if it were a lot fresher i feel like it would really change the experience maybe so i don't know as we were saying earlier if maybe this is a product of who knows how long they were these were sitting around for but I really do like that it's something very different, especially for Pilsner. I just don't have much experience with that. Usually, Pilsners I have, I the ones that I really like, I like because they're so crisp and clean. So I really like the idea of adding an extra layer to it, as long as it's not something that totally takes over. So I, I definitely appreciate the initiative with it. I think there's just a little bit more of it that I, I think could come across more consistently, maybe. Um, I'm going to go next because I feel like I want to hear Johnny's opinion last, so I'm not influenced by it. <laughs> but I thought it's C, a C-grade Pilsner. I've had some really, really, really fantastic, fresh, light, refreshing Pilsners. To me, this is C. I think it's pretty average. It's not bad. It's not great. Well, is that especially because it's a little, I don't know if cloudier or hazier is the right yeah, word, but uh, maybe... I don't know. I'm getting so much of that apple yeah. that's kind of throwing me off, and I don't find it super refreshing or crisp. I'm finding it a little bit, you know, I'm getting that aftertaste. I don't love the aftertaste I'm getting, um, but I don't hate it either. So I think C is it's kind of like a middle of the road average beer for me. Interesting. Yeah, that makes sense too. Because again, you're you're weighing the fact that it is something that is supposed to be a little bit different, but different mm-hmm. you know isn't always necessarily what you want, <laughs> want yeah. in terms of how it turns out and so. i'm liking it less and less as i get to the bottom of my cup. that's actually interesting i think a lot less so i'm mm-hmm. almost tempted to go lower because as i'm getting that's to the bottom i'm like oh i'm done with this i don't want another oh, see, i slugged mine i uh, didn't do that yeah what do you, what do you think it Mr. didn't even last for like 30 seconds without it kind of losing yeah. its appeal um i mean it's uh, like yeah be honest uh, it's tough because listen I, it's, we're we're critics here but this sometimes. is the same thing like someone might really like this beer i don't really get much pistachio from it i'm just yeah. gonna go based on what i like do you of taste course. do you taste the pistachio at all not though? really really I, I get a little bit of yeah. it that's um, what like, i mean i don't towards, get a lot of it towards yeah, the end right? towards the end but yeah. then it goes away and it gets yeah. overpowered by that like dry yeah. appleiness yeah um but it's, I also feel like it should be a little more carbonated. It should have that, like, not a bite, but, like, a nice crisp finish for me in a Pilsner. Like a Pilsner, yeah. Um, and, yeah, that kind of apple taste. Uh, it, it, like, gives me this, like, dry feeling in my mouth. You uh, you ever drink tea where you leave the tea bag in too long? Mm-hmm. And it kind of is like that dry in the mouth. Feel so are you, trying, are you, are you trying to say D for dry? 
Uh, I no, I'll give him a C because it's still a beer. Like <laughs> I'm sure people like it. I also think it might just be an old beer, like she was saying. No, I I think that Some I think that, yeah. I think that might be what it comes down to. I I feel as if I really want to go and get really fresh cans, or I don't. There's like a little bit of like of. a sourness to it too that might be from those nuts. I don't know, but yeah. I that's just not something I really want in a pilsner. So right. it's Fair very, a very subjective C. I'll give do it. I put water now in my beer cup? That's what I for tend the to next do. one. Then, okay, so just. Really, you should like get a new cup every time, but who has time for that? So yeah, we on the clock. Time is money, and we don't have a lot of either. I'll, I'll <laughs> rinse, I usually rinse the beer cup with water, drink that, and then drink the straight water. So I'm rinsing the cup and my. Palate, well, it's funny, you know? actually. A point worth noting, especially because we review beer and coffee normally, is the fact that we talked about right before the podcast how we all kind of wanted to do Nespresso shots because oh, yeah. we're kind of tired because we were also hanging out yesterday. And the problem with that, well, why don't you explain it? Because I, I know that in general, palate fatigue, for example, is a thing yeah. when you're trying going back and forth between beers or different wild flavors of whatever. But w- what specifically about coffee or espresso in your experience affects the, the beer palate? I mean, I almost didn't say anything because it's your podcast. I didn't want to, you know, but... Um, why wouldn't you say anything? I'm going tell to you, tell you what to do, but... Well, no, uh, we don't normally drink coffee and beer on the podcast. No, though. I know, but <laughs> I'm just saying in general, like, I, I don't know. But I spoke up anyways. And I said yeah, so. you're the expert. You better. I, I guess a good way to think of it is, like, nose blindness. Like, if you mm-hmm. even a strong smell goes away after a while if you're around it. So if you're tasting intense, that's like palate fatigue. If you're drinking a lot of beers, right. eventually you, you you won't notice the differences. You need to take a break. Let your palate cleanse or just, like, yeah. go back to baseline. But any really strong flavors can kind of overpower that too you know like if you eat really spicy wings with bad beer you don't notice how bad the beer is you know right the yeah flavor, like the wings cover it up nice and in terms of food that pairs with beers just very briefly how much is that a factor because i feel as if sometimes i go to places and we talk about this with coffee roasters a lot jackie specifically really likes coffee roasters that have bland pastries she get, mm. tends to give the food grade a higher grade if it's a bland pastry yeah and i don't know if bland is the right word it's the word i use but i like that's that. what i always tell you yeah <laughs> i i don't like super sweet pastries with my right. coffee i like a very more simple bland flavor but with my to pair something with, with my less coffee. sugar but less you don't sugar. drink do you you don't really put that stuff in your coffee generally right you don't drink a lot of black coffee no i don't so i'll so have that my have maple that syrup yes in the cup and oat milk or almond yeah. milk so i'm already getting that sweetness she, where so i want something like, more flat yeah. to, to pair with she'll it. like something like a fresh scone or something that's not too sweet yeah that's like buttery or buttery like or nutty or something. see i like yeah. something sweet with my black coffee because i'm I agree. You're speedballing between bitter and sweet. Yeah, I agree. Each bite and sip. But if yeah. you're already getting both in your cup, yeah. it might go too much. I get that. Yeah. And is that the same with beer or not maybe the same as beer, but... Well, beer tasting generally, you can always say it's easier than wine pairings in some ways because for some reason it always gets compared to that. Uh, because <laughs> well, because obviously wine has been around longer and is better, but go on. I can't even. I'm so triggered. My eyes twitch. <laughs> My eyes just started twitching slightly. I just, I just, I just saw your blood pressure rate, just, and, and I have good blood pressure too. <laughs> Not for long. Of all Not beer. anymore. Uh, but generally, with beer and food, you can do like with like, like sweet beer with sweet food, bitter beers with right. bitter food. Like yeah. that, that's always a safe. But but same thing, like you know, like a sweet, sweeter caramelly IPA with like a hot spicy wing. They go together so well because you're doing that back mm. and forth. Yeah. Uh, Randy Mosher talks about that in the Tasting yeah. Beer book. He'll, he'll list these pairings of food and he'll even say at points, I, I know it sounds crazy, but yeah. you should try it. Yeah. It works. Yeah. he. I remember him talking about some of the darker beers. Like um, what's the super dark beer called? I'm going blank. Stout. Stouts. Stout. Like stouts pair really well with desserts, mm-hmm. which oh, I yeah. thought was interesting because I wouldn't have really paired those together but now that he said it i'm like oh yeah that makes so yep. much sense pour that stout on you my want, vanilla ice yeah, cream i want to put the ice cream in my stout yeah, it makes so much sense so i i just like hearing about the I, pairings had it a, opens things up that you don't even think of really i've had like a root beer float with a nitrogen that sounds before. amazing it was pretty good oh, yeah. you got to get the beer the ice cream really cold though because i think the alcohol like melts it faster than soda that still sounds that makes amazing. sense but, but yeah um, but yeah it's really good we should um, try that next time we come out to but that makes sense yeah. that stouts go with desserts because it's the way you roast the malt in a stout is pretty much the same process as mm. coffee beans like a dark roast coffee bean the science behind the science. things that we taste yeah <laughs> speaking of the things that we taste why don't can you crack one i one can open a beer yeah yeah so uh, cans are actually really cool the 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 way a can opens it's a 
a two-step lever or a double lever it's called mm -hmm. like the first part opens it and the second part is what the first part breaks the seal and then it changes where it applies its leverage once that pressure is gone so that it bends the tab down mm -hmm. like it's actually really well engineered yep with the thumb yeah. yep and then, and then you can get your finger under right uh there you go. hear that that's beautiful I'm not usually a lefty opener but <laughs> so this one is the long island farm brewery it's called the farmhouse and I believe it's it, that's the name of it? A, yes. The Farmhouse? Yeah. Okay. The Farmhouse. It says, oh, well, it has notes on it, so we should share those. Yes. Style Saison notes, rustic, fruity, and phenolic, hopped with Nilsson Salvin hops. Mm. Uh, 6% ABV. That sounds all right. I we believe... also did review Long Island Farm Brewery. Yes. And, and I have very positive and I brought ideas him, about Long Island Farm Brewery. I brought Farm him Brewery. there, uh, Johnny there, when we he first came up to visit or came over to visit. And uh, I think, I think this might have been our favorite beer when we visited. Mm -hmm. So I'm very curious what we'll think about the can version because I thought the version on tap at the brewery was awesome. I forget what I would have graded it as, but let's see. So we're starting with the appearance. The appearance. So uh, very bright. Compared, I really like the appearance. Yeah. And you can kind of have the color range for saisons are all over the place. It depends okay. on how strong it is, but. You can kind of do whatever. It's pretty broad style. Nice tight bubbles. That's would something you, else people also look at. Would you call this like an amber? Yeah, Is it's got like some amber ambery, golden amber color. Thing. Yeah, and you you said tight bubbles. That's a thing. Yeah, so that's part of that's part of process too. Is the foaming in your beer is from the proteins and malt, and it's really it's kind of one of the unique things about beer. So it's really the only true foam beverage, carbonated beverage. But there's like certain like oils and fats and proteins you get from malt that help capture the co2 in these like long living bubbles and so you can tell by it has to do with how they did their mash and the sparge these just brewing terms i'm just gonna glaze through those parts you guys <laughs> could google it or if you're beer nerds you know what i'm talking about i, I feel like all the beer nerds that listen are really happy that johnny's here so. right now because yeah. i'm normally like it has bubbles <laughs> i hope i could be getting things terribly wrong no. i think this is all right yeah yeah but these are nice tight bubbles. You can see the way, it, like the lacing on the glass, how it kind of drops down slowly too when you give it a swirl. That's a good hmm. sign. Yeah. So, so you, appearance, this is great for saison. I'm very happy with this appearance. Cheers. All right. Cheers. cheers. And, then, uh, and then aromas next, and then we'll taste it. Oh wait, yeah, I was I was about to chug. Um, I think it smells awesome. Yeah, I definitely get that like phenolic yeah. they're talking about. Is that what that is? Mm -hmm. That that kind. I don't even know how. How would you describe that? Uh, it depends. It's a wide range. Some people, it's this like almost solventy kind of. It can be anything from like spicy peppery to like band-aids it depends on i think it's spicy peppery band-aids i think that's yeah it. that's generally yeah. how that's i get that's what most spot on think. thing that i've ever i mean heard. that's what built it's, this country yes. so <laughs> I, think, right. I think that works definitely built southern france or northern french beer culture right? where the saisons are from yeah, i believe so Belgian Boom, france. Done. i like the way this one smells i think this has a really pleasant aroma well it's a very specific aroma too and it's distinct yeah. If you're having trouble getting aroma too, you do the hand on top mm. and like so it I'll hold up. it with my other hand so you, some of your body heat will help it like warm yeah. up a little and release. And then when you lift, get one good shot. You'll if, pass you just out sit, and... if you just sit your nose in it for a while, like it's really that first sniff where you pick up the most. Mm. So sometimes it's good to sniff away and then sniff back mm. too. To, you'll start recognizing stuff. Right. <laughs> I love how <laughs> meditative it is to smell beer and it's, it's just oh, so good. taste beer. Should I take it, a taste? Yeah. Let's cheers. do it. Cheers. Oh, huh. We're all contemplating. Huh. Radio silence. There's a lot there. Is yeah. Is it a little bit smoky or woodsy? It's funny you say that because towards the end. I really like smoky beers, but I'm not getting that here. It's um fruity. Woodsy? It's like fruity and earthy for sure. I was gonna earthy? say earthy. Yeah, earthy might be the better word for what I'm getting. Um, and it's see though this is a nice dryness. Like oh I, yeah, I, I kind of like the dryness. It makes you. It's the. It's not like lingering in a bad way. It lingers in like the. I want more. See, this you almost know, gives me peppercorny vibes more mm -hmm. so than the smelling of it. The uh, the tasting of it does. Yeah, this I, definitely tastes fresher as well. Uh, can I see that can? Yeah, <laughs> you're like I will be the judge of that. They also don't have Long Island breweries don't put date codes on their cans. I've noticed. But. Do you know a couple of coffee shops we've been to as well, or roasters do not have 
dates on their we've, beans we've, and i'm like are said you that. kidding me how do you not do <laughs> yeah. this we've said that in places have said oh yeah that's a good idea and i'm like how do you how is this coming up yeah. for the first time yeah people tend to think of beer like a soda or something you can just or wine you can just leave it in the fridge for like months and years it's, it's not it's a living product it's right cr- it's somewhere between that and you milk. try to live in the fridge for months and yeah years. it's like oh this milk is bad it's like well you've had it in there for six weeks it was yeah. way better <laughs> or even if you're like the milk is still good it's like it's been 10 days though it's not as good as when you first yeah. got it yeah um so what do you, what but, do you think of about this in terms of trying to embody the style of a saison where where does it fit in in that definition as perfect it's very clean that it has that nice phenolic character but it's not like a punch sometimes it can get real musty and like almost tastes like i could piss. see that right because you know, of the, the earthiness it can, yeah quality sometimes probably, it yeah. can get real strong no this is this is really nice it's really balanced too like you can still taste the malt but you're getting all those yeasty saison mm-hmm. flavors but i'm yeah. still able to like taste some of those fruity hops too well i i really appreciate beers that are just distinct in this way and even beer styles where the the flavor itself i i think it's probably not my favorite but it's it's so specific and it's so unique i just like it for that reason yeah there's something about it that's just enjoyable i wouldn't go to a brewery and have three or four of these but i would oh, have I would. one i mean i haven't no, been, yeah, i'm saying i, really I would like enjoy this. one yeah. i haven't been to belgium so like i don't know if it's an a mm. saison to like the traditional style but yeah to me like it's got a little warmth on it too but it's not like boozy sometimes you get those really hot boozy beers mm. And saisons tend to be real dry, so like you'll notice any any of those. Uh, okay, that- I really like how why that this one is called the farmhouse because when I drink it, I'm getting a little bit of cozy winter time mm. vibes. I I want to drink this in the winter, sitting in front of a fire when it's snowing outside. I'm getting yeah. home vibes. I'm getting yeah. cozy vibes. From, well, I think it- I know it's weird to to get that from a beer, but I'm getting something really savory and and and. It's reminding me of home drinking this beer. Yeah, I think it works really well as a farmhouse mm-hmm. type environment, yeah. Yeah. which makes a difference. And and farmhouse, because they call it a farmhouse and it's also a saison, but like farmhouse beer is one of those more vague styles. But I kind of break it down into there's like table strength, like field strength, table strength, tavern strength, sort of. Um, so like really low percentage, like three, four percent would be what you drank in the fields all day, so you didn't get wasted. <laughs> right. It actually right. hydrates you. <laughs> yeah. And then like table strength would be something kinda like this, maybe mm-hmm. a little less you'd like have with dinner. And then like tavern strength would be going out to get blasted on. Um so this is like a nice uh higher end table strength, I think. All right. So what yeah, do you, what agree. do you think in terms of uh, letter grade? Why don't uh, you go first and then I'll go uh, sure. Jackie goes first. I'll go, and then Johnny can give us his grade. I think this is a really solid B. I was gonna really, say the really same thing. Solid. Yeah. Um, I almost feel like I would probably go higher if we were having it on tap. So a lot of these are kind of skewed by the fact that we're drinking in a can instead of on tap. Sure. Yeah. But I think this is really, really enjoyable, really f- refreshing. I really like it. I think it's a really solid B. And one thing I should say, because I'm also going to go with B, is that we say in general, anything that's satisfactory is good. If a beer is C and it's satisfactory, that could be as simple as saying, yeah, it's not too complex. It's not too complicated, but it's perfectly crushable. That's fine. It's satisfactory to getting the job done and enjoying it. So this I'm just saying how we think of our Mm -hmm. grading system. And B, to me, I sort of feel exactly like how you described for that reason. I feel as if this is really good beer. We say for ourselves that in order for us to give a beer an A, we have to have a wow reaction where we actually, we literally will say out loud, wow. And sometimes we we do not share with each other anything before we talk about the podcast. It's actually really hard. Sometimes in the car, we want to talk about it, but we don't. Yeah, I'm like, and well, well, well. Normally when it's an A, I say wow, no matter what. And I'm like, yeah. it's just, it's involuntary. I'm just saying it. Yeah. It's so you happening. guys don't talk in the brewery? You just silently no. take your own notes? Yeah, we we silent, talk. Silent, silent, silent. We don't talk about the beer. No. We don't talk to the bar- oh, beer tenders. sound fun at We all. write notes to them and we slip them over. No, it's we talk. We're silent. not psychos. Well, we talk okay. to each other, but not about the beer. But not about the beer. No, See, well, that's my favorite thing about trying it's beers. Really it's really like, hard. let's talk about it. Let's argue. No, let's we'll, get we'll, into we'll, it. That's, yeah. not tr- that's not true. We'll talk about the beer. We won't pass judgment on it. Right. So So we'll talk about, oh, that's interesting. I taste this. I taste that. That's fine, but we don't talk about. Oh, I think this is a B, or I think this is a. You don't give C-. it a grade. Then. No, no, you no, know no, what? No. Normally, it's funny if we really 
dislike the experience and are unhappy, that's a lot harder for us to not talk about <laughs> <That's true. laughs> because it's very obvious. Yeah. Or if we love something, right. it's very obvious. Well, our but tell kind of in between. Our tell, we don't our, really talk. Yeah, about. our tell for when we really love a brewery or a coffee roaster is when we buy merch. Yes. If we mm. buy their merchandise, it's like uh, it's they might be in the A grade. Range. I mean, if the merch is cool enough, it doesn't matter how the beer tastes. I, I think so. Well, you want to walk around say- with crap beer coffee merch if the merch looks cool yeah oh i don't like this i don't like this we one we have bit. been so, some places that has has had <laughs> like <some> whatever <laughs> insanely <laughs> cool merch but we've given kind of b b grade which is still great but i always try to buy merch from the a grade places just to kind of so i don't spend all my money on bur- merch well yeah that's a product but- of it's not having money but <laughs> yeah but I feel like some places have some really cool designs. Oh yeah, it's some well, that's of the what best jo- that's what Johnny said. I, I buy merch. Clothes. I buy merch based on how cool it is and how good. The, those are the two factors. If the beer is really good, I'll get some. Right. Something yeah. or if the merch is really cool, yeah, I'll get. That's something. fair. That's what reasonable. was the brewery we went to in Philly? They had the best merch. It was a brewery or a coffee. A roaster? brewery. Human robot. No. Victory. Uh, not Philly. Providence. Our second trip to Providence. Oh, Long Live Beer Works. Yes. Yeah, that was Long a great brewery. You would like that beer brewery. Works was incredible and they had the best it's in an merch. old mill from cool. like the 1800s it's awesome bricks it, yeah, yeah it was really bricks cool. everywhere but long island far brewery also i think has really great vibes and anyways great what do you give for great yes. for the saison i'm very uh, curious i mean i i give this an a because wow. it's not lacking anything Yay. okay but it's but it's funny you say like if it's too simple and doesn't have a wow factor it's like a b because this is a complex style like saison yeah. is not a simple beer yeah really um and some styles are yeah, uh, and some of those are harder to make. If anything, sure. I grade yeah. pilsners and lagers harsher, right? Because they're harder to make, but there's there there's no there's less places to hide mistakes. Yeah, and, and well, choices I think that's, that you. I think make. that's why I'm more lenient with my pilsner grades, for example, yeah. for that reason. But I, I I understand that. I mean, that makes sense to me. I think we all agree that this is a really good beer. This is really good. Yeah. I might be getting into the part where this is not my favorite style. So I might be putting mm-hmm. a little yeah, bit I think, of I think that that's judgment maybe it, yeah. into my grade. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's tough. Fine. It's, it's constantly. Fine. And especially because of the fact that beer has alcohol as you're drinking, your, your biases tend to take over. Yeah. You go, this beer sucks. And you're like, actually, it's a perfectly made beer. I just, I wanted more of the other one that we were yeah. drinking. And I'm angry. This one actually buy like. their stock. Yeah. I will yeah. say this one's my favorite we've tried so far. Yeah. Uh, should, shall we move on to the uh, third one? Sure. The third one, which I believe was also a Long Island Farm Brewery one. Yes, uh, I think so. I wanted to, IPA, right? Yeah, I wanted to do a different one, but this was the freshest stuff that we had bought. So They also had a <laughs> sunflower fine. beer with sunflower seeds in it that I don't think we have to try that was really good. And it, Their like, beer in general I give a brewery really good. points for taking risks on strange ingredients. Oh, yeah. is that what we're trying? Yeah, Sorry. I ruined no. the reveal. Yes. No, <laughs> no you fine. introduced the you reveal. You introduced it. It was yeah. perfect. This is the Sunny Honey Sunflower Ale. If you'd like to do the honors of reading the notes as well. Oh, I sure. Okay. It does yeah. sound better coming from an expert. So, the, so this is where it, it gets harder to grade, though. They call the style a sunflower ale, which I'm sure there's some historical record of that existing on mm-hmm. some farmhouse brewery somewhere it was making that but it also might be something they're the first and they made up i don't know or just a few places so it's hard to judge to a style there this is sure. where it's more do you like it like saisons have been around hundreds of years like i don't really know anything this is the first sunflower beer i've had right so brewed with sunflower seeds and local honey mild and sweet slightly nutty with notes of honey that 5. sounds amazing. 1%. I'm going to love that. That sounds amazing. 5.1%? Yeah. That sounds awesome. Also, still no date codes, though. Wait, I'm sorry. Yeah. Is it What style is it? IPA? Sunflower Ale. So, oh, it's, it is made up. It's, it's yeah. like, well, yeah, okay. Let's, I mean, it's an ale. You yeah, know? sure. But I, I like what you're saying, too, this idea that almost the fact that a lot of places That's are new. Cool. That sounds beautiful. <laughs> New styles could sometimes there's a lot of hype as Jackie spills beer all over my carpet, but I'm not <laughs> the taking, brand new carpet. I'm, I'm not so editing sorry. that out. If you can't edit the beer out of my carpet, it's staying in the podcast episode. <laughs> I'm just catching anything that oh, falls. Okay. Just go for it. Go <laughs> I quickly. I think it's because it's a full beer. It'll get easier. Oh, you're blaming yeah. it on the beer, eh? There you yes, go. that's fair. <laughs> I should probably blame it on the fact that this yeah, is our third beer. Well, yeah, that might have something to yes. do with it. It's entirely possible. <laughs> and also, this beer is doing the thing that some beers do where they trick me by how beautiful they look. But I love this can. The can is one of my it's favorite cans I've seen in a long can. time. I love sunflowers to the point where I actually have a sunflower tattooed on my body. So you're biased. You do? So I'm a little bit biased right here. <laughs> Fair enough. I think this looks awesome, too. <laughs> it's my too. favorite flower. Yes. What do you think? 
Also very bright, clear. That's a beautiful looking beer. Look at all that carbonation. Yeah, I like it's how it's a little almost foamy on top. It's well, so I like to pour. I like to pour for tastings a little rocky. Oh, like, to kind mm-hmm. of excite it or whatever. Yeah, because it releases some aromas and it, you know. Right, I'm gonna try that. That way we could judge the head. Uh, yeah, that, that's working. I mean, I got foam. <laughs> you also yeah. spilled it everywhere, so I feel a little that's better right. now. <laughs> Not on my carpet. I think it looks pretty good. Looks. I, I like that it's dark, but when you hold it up to the light, it's got that. It, it almost has that kind of look to it that beers on commercials try to have, yes. where it's somehow it's transparent, from, yeah. yet somehow not. Yeah, it's very slightly hazy. Yeah. It's almost golden looking. Yeah, this is more like golden, actual, where the last gold. one was more amber. Yeah. When beers get start to get clear enough, you can really see through them. I'll look for the definition of my fingernail through the glass, because there's like some... You've, mm. I've had like some Pilsners and Lagers where it's like just looking through yeah. water. It's so clear. Yeah. All um, right. But aroma? this is like a slight haze. I, I feel like I smell a little honey in it. I don't really pick up a strong hop aroma, which makes sense. It doesn't mention anything about it. It smells almost the only way I can think to describe it because it doesn't specifically smell like sunflowers or honey to me, but it almost smells like sweet flowery, if that makes sense. Which makes sense. I guess sunflowers and honey would be. Yeah. So I don't know. Well, think like think about eating sunflower butter. Like you know that taste, right? No, I've never had you've never sunflower, had sunflower butter. seed you're, butter. You're oh, on the East really Coast, good. bro. Uh, we we turn everything you're, into butter. You're a long way from Portland. We milk we milk and <laughs> butter anything. How do you we, how do you, yes. how do you how do you milk a, a sunflower seed? They're so tiny. Yeah, just one at a time. You just squeeze Artisanally. everyone. Yeah, artisanally. <laughs> no, sun, sunflower seed butter is really good. You it sounds it. amazing. Yeah. I, did, I didn't know that you could that butterfly it. You must never heard of it. You got crunchy stores. I gotta go to. I gotta go to Whole Foods or something. Yeah, yeah, they'll have. Yeah. Anyways, I really like the smell because it's very sweet without smelling clean too, too sweet or in a it's inoffensive sweet you know i feel sense. like this is another beer that's kind of giving me vibes in general i'm thinking back smelling sunflowers to thinking about playing softball and eating sunflower seeds and being out on a baseball field in the they summer they gotcha i feel like long island farm brewery does a really good job with making their beers give you an experience and bring you back in memories i think it's something that they talk about in randy Mosher's book as well is that he says when you when you smell a beer and when you taste a beer to think about yeah memories immediately what does it bring to mind does it make you think of your grandmother's house does it make you think of cookies does it make you think of christmas morning and i kind of like that i i'm a sucker for that whole experience that you get from drinking a beer because i think it's more than just the flavor there is Good brewers, I think, can bring you places. Wow, that was that was beautiful. So I love that you said that about the farm beer that is like touting local ingredients because historically beer is didn't travel very far. It was indicative of the place and the ingredients in the place. Mm-hmm. It was like, oh, we have a lot of spelt farms around here, so our beers are made with spelt instead of barley. Right. It's like, That's how you get so we, many distinct styles, though. Yeah, like we yeah. grow a lot of wheat here, so we have like in Germany they have all these wheat beers because like yeah, it's Germany. Wheat grows like right. crazy in this yeah. area, so like uh, it, it, that you're absolutely right, and mm-hmm. it's changed now with you know science and refrigeration. You can make a German beer in Arizona if you want. Um, but yeah, when a local place tries to make a local beer, that's really cool that it evokes like local imagery because you grew up here around mm. and stuff, sunflowers and honey. So it, that's great. Spot on, Jackie. A great yeah. analysis. Yes. Yeah. Shall we taste? <laughs> yeah, cheers. Yes, cheers. cheers. You got to cheers every time too. I hope, oh, cheers. I hope everyone oh. does that. Oh yeah, absolutely. So it's got that like, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. It's got that slight like breadiness, which I like. Yeah, like a little grainy bready, which is kind of nice. Definitely on the mouth feel, right? The the breadiness. Yeah, I feel people feel like people see a honey in a beer and they think it's going to be crazy sweet and syrupy, but I think it's honey is like ninety five, ninety six percent just fermentable sugars. Yeah. So most of it gets eaten up by the yeast, and you just get this like hint of honey. And it's one of those weird things where if you keep adding honey to your beer, it'll actually finish way drier and less sweet. There's like a weird threshold mm. before it turns into mead, you know, and it becomes weirdly sweet. Uh, but right. like a little bit of honey, it can like kind of dry it out nicely, which I'm getting from this. So mm-hmm. you get that like nice dry breadiness. Uh, and it's, I, I don't get like a heavy mouth feel from it. Like you said, it is a nice summer beer, mm-hmm. uh, but you sure. definitely do get a little bit of that sweetness. Yeah. Definitely. I can taste the sunflowers on the finish. I'm getting that sunflower flavor yeah i'm getting m- more sunflower from this than i was pistachio from the other one. but that right Absolutely. that also might just be the cans were old yeah i'm starting to think i know mm-hmm. me too because they definitely it might have also been the display beer that they give they gave i think us. it was yeah yeah so it was sitting out aging yeah. warm 
Yeah. Yeah, that's not great for beer. So. <laughs> you look you looked very <laughs> I don't know if it's very, fair that you looked very like <laughs> aha. Yes. If if I can give one PSA out of this episode, it's store your beer cold and drink it fresh. That's also beautiful. Regardless of your style unless it's like a we should put that on a shirt. something or something. Yeah. Yeah. Store that cold should drink be a, fresh. Merch. Store that's, cold drink fresh actually a grade podcast we're working on merch yeah. right we now are. so maybe we'll steal that it's good advice yeah we'll give you one yeah. percent of all revenue i'm for afraid that. that i'm afraid that our listeners so yeah. sure yeah. i wasn't even looking for that <laughs> i know i just well, want people treating yeah. their beer right i'm well, afraid that our... <laughs> preach <laughs> i'm afraid that our listeners are going to be like man you guys should have johnny on every week and they're gonna we're gonna get fired because oh i'm this gonna is really this good. is the first stages of my coup i'm gonna take yeah right yeah, he's gonna he's gonna yeah, on pikes. Really yeah. He's gonna start he's gonna start a beer review podcast called hundred percent. Right. <laughs> Watch. I guarantee you. We're hundred percent podcast. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna start seeing Rex on Instagram and social media and be like that. Bastard. It'll be weird yeah. that I do every brewery you do just a week behind. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look at that. Yeah. What, what does Larry David do on Curb? It's a spite, spite It's a spite, spite cast. cast. Just yeah. a spite, spite cast. The, yeah. Why are you doing it? For spite. For spite. Yeah. 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 Call it a plus grade. <laughs> a plus grade, yeah. Uh, so I'm going to go with for grade. Hmm. I like it. I think it's a really good beer, especially thinking, as you were saying, about place and environment and thinking about, as we were the other day, at the brewery itself in this cool, chill, farmy environment. I think it is a really good summer beer. I'm going to go, I think you're right. The beer's kicking in because I'm going to go B plus. I really like it. Okay. What do you think, Jackie? I'm going to go A minus. I really like this beer. This is my favorite one we've had so far. I, again, style preference is a little bit maybe lighter than um, the last one we had. It's more my style preference. Mm. I think it's delicious. I think they're doing something really unique. I haven't tasted a beer quite like this. I think you're getting a lot of flavors, even though it's in a can. I really like this beer. Yeah, I think it's really impressive, especially yeah, really like, it. like you say, it being being in a can. What do you think, John? I mean, this is where my bias comes in because I like most beer styles. Mm -hmm. uh, and if I don't pick up like a detectable off flavor or something that ruins it for me, I tend to go A. So this is another A for me. Oh, I, like I feel like I'm either A's or C's. That's, I, I feel that's like that's reasonable. very fair, though. Like sometimes you say, why are we holding out on giving the A? If we love it, why are we yeah, holding if it, out? If it affects you in a way where you say, this is exactly what I want from whether the style or the moment. Yeah. Then it's an A because it's fine. not it's not necessarily what I want, but it's it's what what they build it as. Sure, you know, yeah. like I don't feel like they threw me for a loop here, or they screwed me over, or it's all hype. It's actually yeah. not that. And, good. and for like, me, a lot of IPAs yeah. are like that. You hear such hype about IPAs, yeah, and and beers. Unfortunately, I can detect all these off flavors now. Just <laughs> like it kind of ruins beer for you when someone points out to you, like, oh, do you notice that thing? It's like, oh, I do kind of notice. It's like, yeah, it's it means this happened, and then you start noticing it in other beers you used to like, and you never notice. You're like, you just ruined these beers for me. I, I actually, I'm really glad you're doing that because now that you talk about it in that way. There have been experiences where this is bad. This is not good beer. Right. We yeah. don't know why. We and don't we know what it is. We can't explain what it is. We can't it's articulate. Like in the aftertaste or it's mm -hmm. in that yeah. chemical feel that you get in your mouth and you're like, what is this? Here I'm getting baseball fields in summer, but I've had beers where I'm like, all I'm tasting is a hangover. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's crazy. But the fact of the matter remains is that with all of our grades, we trend towards similar ranges, which I think is really interesting, right? I mean... Even though we're maybe a letter grade, a half letter grade off, we're more in the upper tier versus... It's not like you taste this and you say A and I say, I think it's a D plus, right? Right. Which... Well, I if we kept going nine, ten beers in, that would start happening. Do you think so? I think that's an inherent flaw in beer competitions. Why? Like, I would like if they tell you what number out of the, the day the beer is that they oh like, I is see, this right. the first beer you judged or the hundredth right. beer you judged right i mean That's some a really places good point. yeah some places try to break it up like we'll do multiple sessions over several days that makes sense or like you'll have three sets of three independent sets of judges test them at different times or like you said for canning like okay we'll try from three different cans in case there was a bad can like you try to rule all those out statistically by sure like, yeah. but a lot of competitions you don't so it's like oh if i was the last beer you tried you yeah. might just think it sucks. Like, this is really no nothing wows me about this. It's like, well, yeah, you're just drinking like imperial stouts. And you're I, wasted. You're going, yeah, you're wasted <laughs> drinking barrel aged stouts. You're not going to think my sunflower ale. You're like, there's nothing. This is nothing. Right. Was, right. So, um, that makes, that the, makes better, the better, the better competitions do account for that. But I just wish they would include. I've also got seen some right. like beer competition notes. Clearly, the person was wasted. They just write something <laughs> nonsensical. 
Yes. Uh, you, know what's fu- you know what's funny that you say that? If z- because I know exactly what you're talking about because sometimes I grade papers and I think, man, this student was lit. They wow. they were not on their A game at all. Yeah. And it shows. Or maybe the beginning of the paper, you're like, mm, they finished this morning of. <laughs> the last page, right. it kind of falls off. Right. Well, yeah. also, I noticed with middle school work, we just did this awesome poetry unit. I showed you some of the poems that my students wrote. Amazing. And we're yeah. grading them. And it does make a difference if the first one you read is really good or really bad mm. because it kind of skews the rest of sure, your... Yeah. I almost like reading something that I know is going to be kind of average first so that I can then mm-hmm. go up and down from there. If I read the best poetry from a student first nothing else is going to get a great grade right see i do that because i know what the highest tier standard is and then i can say okay this is meeting that or not right Uh, yeah absolutely so it's a different process but something also you guys did right was we all took turns going first in our impressions which is exactly that you want to do that when you do like a this is more of a taste panel than a competition competition but like you want to do that because otherwise Especially if you have like a really, really charismatic person going, or you guys think I know a lot about beer. If I went first every time, it might color your impressions of it. Yeah. So it's good to everybody take turns because right. you that is just a psychological thing that happens. So you want to be and be impressed by a different person each time. Yeah. And sometimes that do it sense. yourself. You know. That was the thinking. Now that you said it, of exactly. course, I assume it was all <laughs> exactly what we planned. <laughs> so having said all of that, I'm curious how you would grade us overall because obviously the podcast. Whatever. Oh no. Yeah, no, no, no that's, <laughs> That's a whole other episode. So, let's not do that. How, how, would, how would you grade our uh, our beer podcasting experience uh, I, or I your mean, experience, whatever? My experience yeah. on this episode's been great, but I'll have to go back and listen to see as a listener <laughs> if it's a yes. grade. Yeah. You know, you so, guys judge multiple fields, you know? So, I, I mean, in terms of performing it, I think this is great, but I might listen back and be like, wow, that Johnny guy's a real douche. <laughs> so. I can't pass a final grade yet. I, I'll update you guys and you can put it on the I next think we, I think we will we'll be happy. When we first started the podcast, it was torture listening to my own voice because I can't tell you how many times yeah. I said, you know, yeah, right? Like, I said it so many times. I'll edit them out. Joe I have nothing good to do editing, with Summer. But I do <laughs> so think I, it, it was good that I listened because I think I've got a little bit better. Yeah. Because you know to stop and rephrase yourself. Right. Because when you have natural pauses, you tend to fill them in with ums and likes and you knows. And I've said too many of those already, and now I'm repeating them. So I do have one question before we do wrap up. Yeah, we should wrap up. You have been to a couple of Long Island breweries now, and a lot of them we have reviewed on the podcast. Do you have, out of in Long Island, a favorite brewery or one that you really like, really recommend for people to check out? Like from a brewer perspective, from someone who's in the industry? I think Brooklyn does great stuff. Other half, Bro- baby. Brooklyn Brewing. Yeah, I, I would put Brooklyn above other half. I love Ar- uh, Garrett Oliver. You got to go back to other half. Garrett Oliver is a genius. The well, we need to go to Brooklyn. Brooklyn so. We have Brewing. to go to Brooklyn. You guys need to go to Brooklyn <laughs> yeah. Brewery. Um, we could actually go this weekend. And my first boss in Ooh. craft beer used to Good. be the tasting Maybe that room. could be our next review. Yeah, we could. You should definitely go yeah. uh the, my one of my first bosses in craft beer worked at their was their tap room manager for a while and uh nice. he just had a great attitude and approach and like we'd always talk about other breweries and stuff but every now and then be like, yeah brooklyn just does such great stuff and they were early on it. too they, yeah. they have it's, it down it's funny you said that because back now 10 12 years ago when i taught in new york city Brooklyn Brewery was the first real craft brewery that I ever went to. And it was before craft beer really blew up on Long Island at all. And I remember going there and thinking, wow, this is insane that they're doing this. And I think they were on the beginning of it in in New York. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, the the brewmaster there, Garrett Oliver, he's a beer genius in a lot of ways. But he also wrote, I think it's called the Brewmaster's Table. And it's just an encyclopedia of beer and food pairings that's spot on so he's also like really good like he's really good at beer but also food like it's not really fair you know people <laughs> yeah, have sure. like overlapping things like that yeah so you should definitely um i'll just send you his book i have a copy all right well yeah thanks yeah thanks for having me this guys. was yeah. so much fun thank yeah. you for coming yeah. on anytime yeah this was awesome see, see oh. we are so popular now that we can get guests from the west coast to fly out to us to do podcasts just for this just yeah. for this this is the only reason johnny came <laughs> oh yeah of course yeah 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 and the per diem offered was terrible so like you know i really wanted <laughs> what to are you talking that. about i offered you one percent of all merchandise proceeds on it's a uh, great keep deal. cold drink fresh it's actually a great keep, deal what was it keep cold drink fresh S- store cold 
Drink fresh. This is why you're getting. I mean, the 1%. I've seen that written on many cans, so I don't know. I can still print it on a T-shirt. Though. You sure can. I plan yeah. to. I shirt can. But I don't think I, I. I don't think I invented it. But nevertheless. But let's steal it because it's good advice. That's it. That's it right there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, Johnny, our resident beer expert. Yes. I'm willing to say. We sure. uh, will one of these days we'll have a resident coffee expert on to kind of do the same thing for the coffee fans who listen for coffee. But if you stuck around this long for the beer, I hope you learned a lot. I know I certainly did. And uh, hopefully, yeah, we'll be back next week, probably with a, another brewery, because I feel like we're, we're we're just doing breweries more now that it's summer. It's nice yes. to sit outside and drink beer. I don't know. And also, we have really explored almost all of the coffee roasters on Long Island. And we're doing a couple of episodes this month before we head to Italy and si. do a month of podcasts there. L'Italia. Cool. Yeah. Lemoncello. Oh, I didn't even get to cover diacetyl. I'm going to have to come back. We'll do that another episode. I have to come back for the diacetyl episode. Listen, we or diacetyl, as some people call or it. Or diacetyl. But that, that's we started talking about that at the beginning. I was like, no, no, save it for the cast. We never got to Tomato, it. tomato, yeah, baby. We'll have to come back. Yeah, now yeah. We get, we'll leave everybody on a cliffhanger because we'll definitely have a part two with Johnny, without a doubt. Yeah. But yeah, we'll be back next week with uh, either a coffee roaster or a craft brewery. Not sure. I'm thinking craft brewery because I feel like it's a good transition. From Maybe this Brooklyn week. Brewery. Maybe hopefully. Brooklyn Brewery. <laughs> the only way to know for sure is to follow us wherever you're listening to this and come back next week. So. Yes. And again, if you do subscribe to Patreon, everything that you put into Patreon will go directly back into our tastings and supporting these local businesses that we're checking out. Yeah. So you can become an A grader yourself, like we say, by hopping on over to patreon.com slash a grade podcast and yeah you do get bonus contents behind the scenes pictures videos of everywhere we visit some of them are quite insightful and you do get the report card so you can reference every place that we've actually given a grade to and thank you to our patreons that are already out there we appreciate you guys so much and we're really happy that you're they actually with us. they actually are a grade the patreon yes they're pretty like every patreon that we have is pretty a grade yes caliber person. definitely i just i realized i didn't ask what's my grade i didn't oh. get a grade yet uh, obviously. you made me grade you what's you were totally a grade Ooh. i feel like you came yeah. in and you are confident in knowing exactly what your you grades have the, are. the the malt hat I how mean, can you not be a grade this has so. been wonderful yeah. yeah come on <laughs> yeah no thank you i mean i mean the the insights are appreciated because like we were saying earlier we talk a lot about how we feel about the beer, but just getting your insights and how you approach it is actually very useful to us, but obviously people who listen as well. And now they can know next time they go and they try beer. Oh, yeah. Okay. This is how I should approach it. You know, maybe think about it a little bit differently, more specifically. So. And we're learning and we're hoping that the people that listen, you know, also are learning and you go in and you taste things and you try things and you get away from those big corporate <laughs> type companies and you try out the craft beer and you try out the local coffee roasters. So it's really helpful. Yeah. So I guess until next time. As we always say, stay safe out there, be well, drink well, and hope to see you then. Bye. Bye bye. Bye. That's it. Oh, uh, uh, life's too short to drink bad beer. There you go. Woo! I think that's a Stedman quote. Okay. I like it. Another yeah. merch opportunity there. <laughs> Did you? Can we steal that? I think that's flying dogs. God that's, dang it! I think Ralph Stedman said that, but it's good advice. It's true. Cut. It's too short. Okay. Well, we could do a cut we could it, do a it, Michael it. Scott thing where he does the the Wayne Gretzky quote, and then he says Michael Scott. Yeah. <laughs> Let's do that. Ralph yeah. Stedman's job.